Thanks Alex. We're going to take a look at some simulation improvements now. So we'll take a look first at uh, some improvements that we've had to non-linear. So if we just turn on the simulation add-in, just to ensure we've got our study loaded up. And we'll take a look at this one that's been created for us here. So it's a, it's a 2D simplified study. Uh, but when we create nonlinear studies, one of the things that causes some problems is that they can take a very long time to run. They're normally quite well refined. Uh, something that we struggled with with previous releases is the ability to know whether we'd got our conditions set up correctly. So what we have now in 2015 is when we run a study, we can now choose to show intermediate results for the current step. So what that means is it's going to show on screen each of the time steps that the study is solving for. So we can very quickly start to see if we've got our study configured correctly. And you'll see here that the uh, study is actually animating as it's solving, showing us the results at each of the time steps. So we can ensure before we commit to a long run whether or not we've got our simulation study configured properly. So that's quite a nice improvement to the non-linear side of things. If we take a look at this bracket example here, uh, again in previous releases one of the things that was a little difficult to do was set up multiple load cases uh, onto our simulation studies. We'd find that we'd have to apply all our external loads uh, and then duplicate the studies and, and suppress and, and turn off loads and things like that and maybe increase the values if we wanted some multiplication factors. So with the introduction of 2015 we've now got a new a uh, tool called the load case manager so if we just open this up and have a look you'll see it will show us all our fixtures uh, within our study and all the forces that we've applied listed out in a nice tabular fashion so what we can do then is add another primary load case for example so we'll call this one torque and we can choose to unsuppress the torque load in this particular load case here so we can use multiple combinations of different loads, we could unsuppress un suppress gravity in a particular direction if we wanted to. Another nice feature of the load case manager is we can now build load case combinations. So within this tool we can say that we want to include maybe a downward loads plus two times uh, the torque load. So you can use multiplication factors within uh, the load case combinations as well. You can also track results with sensors towards the bottom uh, if you want to. And then what we can do is we can run each of those load cases uh, in one hit. So we don't have to run multiple studies by running them individually. We can do that collectively within the load case manager. If we switch over to a completed example here, once you have run that, we get a really nice results view as well where we can see in the same sort of tabular arrangement the results for each of the uh, plot graphs that we've chosen to show uh, again listed out in this tabular format so we can see here that it does make these load case additions uh, much much easier to control another area in simulation that's had some improvements is the shell meshing uh, more specifically the application of those shell meshes so if we take a look at a study here uh, and look in the tree you'll see, you'll see we've got a number of shells applied if we right click on one of those shells we can now open a new tool called the shell manager so that will open up towards the bottom of the screen for us and it will allow us to see uh, each of the shells that's been defined in our study their thickness and their material and in which direction they're being offset so this is really quite nice because it makes life a lot easier to ensure that everything's been defined correctly within here. Another thing that I really like is we can now create groups within here as well. So for example, all the shell bodies that uh, go to make up this base rail group uh, can be added into a group here. But what that means is that we can change the shell thickness for each of those items collectively. So here if we go to uh, 7 mil, for example and we'll choose a material and we'll choose an alloy steel then if we hit OK anything that was applied with the previous shell value will now take on the options that we've set within there 
We can also choose to color selections based on thickness. So on screen it will highlight those uh, in a particular color for us and down here as well. So we can see those and if we just show all you can see those graphically on the screen like so. And you can also show material values within there as well. So we've got some nice additions to how we control shells within the system. Another area uh, that's seen improvement is how self-bonding for components is, is dealt with within the system. So here we've got a bracket which has got a very, very small gap. Uh, and ideally what we'd like to see is the system bonding that together uh, as if it was welded. But in 2014 what we would see is that type of thing not happening so we'd get a, uh, an undesired result in our simulations. In 2015 that has been addressed so we now get a much more uh, satisfactory result when we want run studies of that type. Along a similar line, uh, it was sometimes quite difficult to apply self-contact between features with single faces. So here we've got a sweep, uh, which is one face. And to apply self-contact, uh, say we wanted to compress that spring, would be quite difficult in this situation. We'd need to choose a num that face to split and then apply contact between two faces. But now when we have that type of system, uh, if we go into the contact sets and select a single face, there's now an additional option to turn on self-contact. So when we do things like that, uh, it just makes life a lot easier when we, uh, when we go to set those type of studies up. And if we just view the results here uh, and take a look, you'll see that we can get some really nice options with those, or really nice results with those type of, uh, that type of self-contact that we're adding. So it's just a much more predictable uh, behaviour that's a lot more streamlined than it was previously. Okay, so just in summary, we've seen the new nonlinear results during run, uh, the new load case manager. One thing that we didn't look at was the new frequency response graph, where we can look at mode number, uh, mass participation factors. We've also got the ability to view dynamic results in fatigue studies as well. We saw the new sh uh, shell manager with table of defined shells, colour by thickness, preview the offsets and we can group shells. Uh, we also saw the shell self-bonding for non-touching edges and we also saw the self-contact option with that spring towards the end. We can now also view non-linear cyclic symmetry uh, as well. And on the performance side of things, the iterative solver has seen some improvement. So it's had a new formulation for connectors, bonding, and no penetration contacts. And there's just some examples towards the bottom of the screen there in the reduction in solve time that's being seen with that new solver. So, uh, you know, some really nice speed improvements using that solver. There's also been a new solver introduced, uh, which is powered by Intel. So that's available for static thermal frequency, linear, dynamic and nonlinear studies as well. Uh, and it's a really sort of quite an efficient solver. We haven't had a huge amount of time to, to test that internally, but SolidWorks have done some benchmarks and you can see some real time improvements for things like thermal studies there at 71% in reduction of time. So hopefully that will give us a, a real boost in performance. We've also seen uh, a reduction time in the time it takes to detect contacts prior to solve as well. So again, looking at these values, you can see some vast improvements at the top end there over the 2014 variant. And also some faster sheet metal surface mapping times as well. Again, some great reductions being made there in 2015. Okay, so on the flow simulation side of things, we've seen a number of improvements as well. So uh, we've seen the ability to do preparation while solving, we can now compare or we can now compare XY results plots. We've got a new color coded leak tracking system uh, and a control task convergence as well. By far our favorite though uh, with flow simulation is the ability to now designate an area to have a rotating mesh region. So we can now see uh, or we can now more accurately solve studies where areas are rotating within, uh, within a system. So in this pump example 
or here where we've got two fluids mixing together you'll see a much more accurate uh, behavior of that type of system now in flow 2015 so some really nice improvements there to that system